And what I want to do here is show you the West Clear Creek hike situation. Um, kind of much in the same style I did with the Beaver Creek hike situation here last year. Um, this is probably my favorite hike in Northern Arizona. What you're going to want to do is get yourself a map. Uh, I won't tell you how to do that. I'm sure you can figure that out and that'll get you to the bullpen. Um, but I do also encourage people very strongly to start using Google Earth if you haven't done it already because in effect it is a map. It shows you where all the roads are, shows you where the trails are. You can figure out where the trail heads are and uh, this of course is critical to the whole situation. So at the bullpen the first thing you can do is just go to the bullpen and by the way the road 215 getting in there is kind of rough and uh, that's kind of what makes this a great situation is not a lot of people are there. You can just goof off at the bullpen or do a hike up Clear Creek a little ways and back but the first bike hike you could do would be up the Bludgett Basin Trail uh, stashing your bike up at the top and then riding that back down to the bullpen which is about a half a day hike or you could do a much longer one going all the way to the end of the trail um, and riding all the way back around. And some people are so gung-ho hikers, forget the bike, they'll just do the whole loop as a hike. That's a long way, so you want to figure that out on Google Earth. Now, there are various, various places where there's quite a few signs. You might want to read this stuff. There's been some rule changes there over the years, and... Uh, you know, basically it just boils down to they've turned it into a day use area. I wouldn't deface the signs. That'll probably get you a ticket if anybody catches you doing that sort of thing. Um, this is during the week and um, on the weekend this parking lot would be packed, totally packed, which is kind of why I don't go in there. And like I say, one of the reasons are it's not any busier than it is, is the road coming in is pretty darn rough. You're going to figure that out right away. But you'll notice what happens is you, you get on what used to be an old road and soon thereafter you're going to find there's these little trails that kind of go off of it. There are actually several of them. <laughs> the ones to the right take you down to West Clear Creek and the ones to the left will take you up to uh, an old homestead cabin that's up there. I'll look around my hide, hard drive and see if I can find the picture I had that for the roof caved in. Um, that was really a cool work. I, I don't have much history on it for you, but uh, anyway, you'll see basically there's several trail kind of options for you there. And uh, I'm going to call this section the start of the trail. And from the trailhead, it kind of goes back to what I'm going to use as the first crossing. Um, and there's just a lot of wonderful things to look at in here and it's uh, quite a quite a pretty place but what eventually happens is all those trails that split off come back together at the end of the big field that was there and uh, end up walking down this little trail to what could be the first crossing now I don't take the, this particular crossing um, it could be but it's kind of your first encounter with uh, the creek if you didn't bear right um, and there's a little bit of a oh I don't know I call it a fishing hole or maybe even a bit of a swimming hole if you do this in the summertime you're probably going to get wet here because uh, it'll be pretty warm <laughs> in fact I don't generally hike it in the summer uh, I like to hike it this do this hike in fall, late spring. Uh, but right here, you can see you've got a pretty good pool right there that you could goof off in if you wanted to. They have another sign on this one that's explaining the wilderness situation to you. Um, but you want to take a left back there, and that'll put you on a trail that really has. Uh, uh, a few offshoots that head off to the right and you know along about in here where you cross this this kind of drainage you're you've got to be at least a mile in and so if you were a backpacker type you could camp on the right here 
Uh, there's several really good spots in here and, and just a little ways from the creek if you want to do a little fishing or swimming. So I'll leave the kind of the trail at three times speed in the upper left and you can just sort of see some of the other little offshoot trails and neat little camping spot there. And, um, boy, it's just, uh, this, this is a wonderful thing to do, not just in late fall, but in actually in, in the winter is uh, the best time to hike the bullpen, if you ask me. There's nobody else in there. And by the way, those top two pictures were taken in the winter. In fact, there's at least three different trips that I went on and got video that I'm combining here in this video. So you're going to find that they, there's quite a bit of difference in, in some of the footage. And I'll illustrate that to you right here at what I use as the first crossing, um, which is kind of one of my favorite places in Arizona in general. As we come down here toward the river, this is really the first crossing. Now, watch what happens here. Is we're going to take this scene of this little pool of water and we're going to turn it to summer. <laughs> so you'll notice I used two different sets of footage on that. And uh, But this is definitely one of my favorite places in Arizona. I probably got the best autumn picture I've ever had from here. That would be this one. Uh, but anyway, that's your first crossing. You get a, get over there, and uh, that puts you on a whole new uh, uh, course. And I'm going to call this the middle section of the trail after the first crossing up to the point at which you start going up a pretty steep hill to get out of this thing. And uh, you're going to cross the creek three different times to get uh, from where that arrow was just illustrating but really nice trails, uh, pretty much a cakewalk, if you will. Um, beautiful things along the way. And I'm showing you this to you four pieces at a time just to give you a real clear idea of, of kind of what it looks like in here. Uh, highly, highly encourage you to do this if you haven't already. And even if you have, I do it every chance I get. Now this is either the th third or fourth crossing, I'm not sure which. But at some point, you end up kind of up a ways up the hill off of the, the creek. And uh, this is a good spot where you get a good panorama looking back the way we came. Um, I think I've used this footage somewhere else in one of my calendars or something. Looks pretty familiar to me. Um, but it is a really pretty place. And obviously, this particular thing was done in the winter. Uh, you'll notice those deciduous trees down there do not have any leaves on them. <laughs> it's considerably prettier in the summer and fall. Fall is probably the best time to hike this thing. I've always imagined that that rock up there would be a place for the Anastasia Indians to hang out and do things. Uh, there's a stream, uh, actually there's a spring right underneath that rock that flows down. You can tell because there's of all the deciduous trees that are under when you get on the other side. So in the upper left here, this is kind of where we start coming off the little bit of an esplanade there and, and uh, start heading down to what amounts to the fourth crossing. Um, pretty standard stuff. Now I do want to warn you that uh, all of the video you're seeing here is at least five years old and some of it's probably eight or nine years old and things change in that period of time so 
Um, you know, you need to be flexible and, and pay attention to what's going on. Don't take anything I'm saying here as sacrosanct. And um, I would also be careful of the monsoons if you hike it in in the summer. Those things can kick up on you in a heartbeat. So we're going to start climbing out of this thing and uh, it'll be obvious to you when that happens. Um, it, the trail starts to sneak up onto the side of the canyon much more and then it starts taking a pretty direct route. As you can see away from the canyon completely. It's not far but it's all uphill. I would liken it to can climbing out of the Grand Canyon, which I've done several times. Uh, and it's pretty much the same thing, only not as far. I guess it's probably two miles, but it's all uphill. And you're going to know it by the time you get up to the top. Uh, a lot of cool little things to look at. I have no idea what that is. I guess a tree of some kind, but it sort of looks like a white, white man to me. <laughs> it's falling off a cliff, I don't know, of Sasquatch or whatever, who knows. But uh, as you start coming out of this thing, there's a lot of really wonderful things to see. And the trail itself is is pretty cool uh, to me. I mean, it's a good trail. that got some rocks in it and all that, but, uh, you know, it's, um, it's still a lot of uphill. So you just want to take your time and, you know, as you start huffing and puffing, you, 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 that's when you get to stop and enjoy the, the look around. The good news is you got a lot of really cool stuff to look at. And really one of the cool ways to uh, tell how far up you, you are is to look back across to the other side of the canyon that kind of uh, that, that'll give you an idea of where you are if you look like you're about halfway up then over there you know eye level with half highway halfway up then you got a ways to go but as you start to get toward the top it's different now as we come out this is actually road 214 a and the last time I was there this little sign was not there so just be advised of that West Clear Creek hikes, they're great. 